The 38-year-old Samantha was a young mother of three children who also plays the role of a psychotherapist. However, her family has not been happy for many years, and she has always been living under the despotic power of her husband. She hopes to change her husband's irritable personality someday, until one day police found her body hanging on the garage door of her home. Everything is too late. Samantha was born in the summer of 1980 in a loving and warm family outside Melbourne, Australia. As the only daughter in the family, her parents tried their best to provide her with a high-quality life and education so that her talents could be fully demonstrated. Samantha does well in school. She not only excels academically, she also actively participates in sports activities, especially in acrobatic gymnastics and dance, and won many awards for her outstanding performance. After graduating from high school, Samantha entered a well-known university to study psychology. Later, she found a job as a psychotherapist in a large medical institution, where she quickly won the respect and trust of colleagues and patients. She firmly believes that this profession is her mission, and she loves this job very much. At the end of 2005, Samantha met a man named Basham. Their relationship was just friendship at first, but it soon developed into a love affair. Many people who knew them did not understand what attracted them to each other because they are significantly different in many ways. Samantha is kind, open, and good at communication. She always faces any difficulties with the most positive attitude. On the contrary, Basham is quite rude when communicating with others. He has a hot temper and is highly confrontational. But despite this, Samantha and Basham got married a year and a half after they met. After getting married, they bought a house in a suburb of Melbourne, very close to Samantha's parents' home. Basham soon found a job in a mineral development company, a job that required him to travel frequently so he didn't spend much time at home. And this may also be the reason why his marriage to Samantha lasted so long. Basham is a completely violent maniac, an obsessive compulsive disorder patient. He not only requires Samantha to obey him completely, but also has some special requirements that are almost pathological. He insisted that every item in the home should be kept neat and orderly, and any change in the location of any item would not be tolerated. For example, books on the bookshelf must be arranged in a specific order, and laundry supplies in the bathroom must be placed in a prescribed position. The order of positions cannot be reversed at all times. Any slight change may trigger his rage and make him extremely aggressive in an instant. Samantha realizes that her husband may have serious mental problems, but as a psychologist, she knows how to resolve contradictions and conflicts. She continues to hope that her husband can adjust in time and become more calm and self-restrained. After many years of marriage, they had three children, but the birth of their children did nothing to soften Basham's temper. One day in 2014, he beat Samantha without mercy, and Samantha kept silent about it. She did not call the police nor tell anyone about it. She naively believed that something like this would never happen again. However, a year later, the violence resumed, and her husband once again assaulted her. This time it almost cost her life. Samantha finally couldn't stand it anymore. Her husband Basham's constant tantrums and manic desire to control her every move made her scared. She had to report the truth to the police and move to her parents' house with her children. The couple officially divorced in the spring of 2017, and the court ruled that Samantha and the children could live in their original home. Soon after, the mother and the three children moved back into their home. However, Basham did not intend to give up this failed marriage. He continued to harass his ex-wife. Samantha felt extremely disturbed and lived in fear that Basham was a life-threatening threat to her and her children, so she applied for and obtained a court restraining order to prevent her ex-husband from approaching them or disturbing them in any way. But the restraining order didn't stop Basham. He rents a house nearby and looking for ways to annoy Samantha. According to one of Basham's friends, he vowed to take away everything his ex-wife had, from her house to her children, and to take physical revenge on her. Shortly before the tragedy, 
Basham once again told his friend in a threatening tone that Samantha would pay for her actions. But the friend didn't take the word seriously until he heard about Samantha's death. Due to the constant fear and nervousness, Samantha installed an alarm system in her home and added protection to her windows. She also installed security cameras outside, and she had mentioned to friends on several occasions that she was concerned that her ex-husband might break into her home and cause harm to her or the children in some horrific way. About a year after the divorce, Samantha began to feel that her ex-husband seemed to be calmer and showed a calmer attitude. After all, he appeared less and less around her, which gave Samantha a false sense of security. During this period, she made a new boyfriend and began to make plans for a new happy future. On July 22, 2018, Samantha celebrated her 38th birthday in the company of her close friends and beloved boyfriend, Wayne. According to the memories of friends who spent this holiday with her, Samantha looked extremely happy that day. Just a few days ago, her new boyfriend, Wayne, proposed to her and they planned to enjoy a long vacation after the wedding to forget all the unpleasantness in life. The morning after her birthday, Samantha took her children to school. On the way, she received a call from a neighbor and friend, warning her that Basham was near her home. Samantha was worried about this, but she still told herself not to panic, just to be careful, because in a few weeks, she would accuse her ex-husband of domestic violence in court, and she was worried that Basham might retaliate against her because of the accusations he faced. Samantha shared her concerns with her closest friend on the phone, but she was reassured that everything would be fine. However, after that phone call, she was never seen alive again. When Samantha didn't come to school to pick up her children that afternoon, the teacher decided to call the police after learning about the situation her family was facing. After receiving the alarm, law enforcement officers immediately rushed to her residence to check the situation. At first, they thought Samantha might have not gotten off work yet, and no one was home. But when law enforcement officers decided to check the garage, they were shocked by what they saw. Samantha's body was hanging from the garage door, looking like a suicide. But Samantha's body looked like it had been run over by a truck, with multiple broken bones and wet hair hanging down her face. She was not wearing the same clothes she had left that morning, and her shoes were missing. It was obvious that someone had gone into the garage and tried to make Samantha's death look like a suicide. But the murderer made numerous mistakes. For example, there was an overturned ladder next to the body, but the rope Samantha used to hang herself was too long that her feet could touch the ground. Samantha had severe bruises under her eyes and temples, and her whole body was covered with scrapes and bruises. The forensic doctor later determined that she had suffered a severe blow to the head, so she was either unconscious or dead when she was hanged. Forensic experts found traces of a stranger's blood and skin tissue under the fingernails on Samantha's hands, suggesting that Samantha struggled and scratched her attacker before she died. There were a lot of blood splatters on the floor, walls, and the body of the car. That night, Basham arrived at his father's house on his motorcycle. He looked extremely anxious and had several fresh scratches on his face. When his father asked him about it, he was evasive and explained that he had accidentally scratched by a branch while riding his motorcycle because he was not wearing a helmet. He then took a large pack of wet wipes and began wiping his motorcycle, claiming that he wanted to remove any mosquitoes or bugs that had clung to the motorcycle while he was driving. Basham's father was a policeman, and his instinct told him that things might not be simple. Sure enough, his professional instincts didn't deceive him, because the very next day police investigators showed up at his door, asking about his son and claiming that Basham was the prime suspect in his ex-wife's murder. At this time, Basham's father finally realized the seriousness of the matter. At first, his father claimed that he had not seen his son, after buying a certain amount of time, he used his own professional experience to guide his son Basham on how to respond to questions that the police might ask and how to behave, to clear his actions even if he could not completely clear his name, so then at least his criminal penalty could be reduced. Basham followed his father's advice and then voluntarily went to the police station to surrender. 
With the help of a lawyer his father hired for him, Bassam initially refused to cooperate with the investigation. He remained silent and turned a blind eye to all questions, but he did not deny his guilt either. But despite this, the evidence collected was conclusive enough. The scratches on Basham's face did not escape the eyes of investigators, but he argued that he was scratched by his ex-wife in self-defense. The blood and epithelial tissue found under Samantha's nails also belonged to Basham. Basham's sweat was also found on the rope used to hang Samantha's body. When police inspected his motorcycle, they discovered traces of Samantha's blood. In a trash can outside Basham's father's home, police found a blood-stained shirt belonging to Samantha. Basham was trying to destroy that evidence, but he didn't have time to process it. CCTV footage installed outside Samantha's home shortly before the tragedy showed a man scurrying away from the crime scene on the day of the murder. Although his face was obscured by a baseball cap, there was no doubt that it was Basham himself. Accordingly, the police restored the incident that day. When no one was home, Basham managed to unlock the garage door and enter the garage. He stayed there for several hours, waiting for his ex-wife to come home. When the unwary Samantha drove into the garage, Basham attacked her severely the moment she got out of the car. Samantha resisted desperately, and Basham's face was scratched. However, the difference in strength between the two was too much, and Basham beat his ex-wife until she lost consciousness. To cover up the crime, he took off her blood-stained top and found a black t-shirt in the bedroom for his ex-wife to put on. He poured water over her head to clean the blood from her hair. Basham then placed a rope around his ex-wife Samantha's neck and hung her from the garage door. To create the illusion of suicide, he placed a ladder on the floor next to the body. But due to time constraints, Basham did not accurately calculate the length of the rope. He then cleaned up the blood but did not notice the small blood stains that were splashed around when he committed the crime. When the news of Samantha's murder came out, many people felt unbelievable. The saddest thing was that Samantha's murderer was her partner, who had shared joys and sorrows for many years, and the person she suffered from mental and physical abuse in her last marriage. She had raised her children with the belief that everything would get better with time. When the truth came to light, Basham changed his defense strategy at the advice of his lawyer. He admitted that he was indeed at his ex-wife's home that day, but he was only there to have a conversation with her and try to persuade her to drop the domestic violence charge against him. However, the conversation did not go as expected and they clashed. He admitted that he had been violent with her. Basham claims his ex-wife Samantha was still alive and sane when he left. Defense attorneys insisted their client was only guilty of assault and that he did not kill Samantha, but she took her own life. This rhetoric triggered strong indignation from Samantha's family. Family and friends knew that Samantha would never do this and would not be willing to leave her children. Additionally, she is getting remarried soon and has already made plans for her upcoming travels. The case did not go to trial until the end of 2022. Samantha and Basham's two daughters attended the trial. They denounced their father and demanded a fair punishment for him. To avoid unnecessary harm, their youngest son did not appear in court. During the trial, the defense lawyer had been trying to prove that Samantha committed suicide in an extremely depressed state. But the court did not accept it because it was very certain that Basham had been waiting in the garage for several hours, preparing for what was about to happen. He has prepared many things for the crime and tried to destroy the evidence. In February 2023, the court finally found Basham guilty of brutal, premeditated murder and was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole for 30 years. After Basham was imprisoned, his and Samantha's children were adopted by Samantha's parents. Such cases scare people from getting married these days. The best we can do is to learn from the story. Never, never, never marry a man who has trains of violence. Never, never, never expect they will change. Nobody would change. At least you are safe for being alone. What is the point now to the children? They will grow up without any parents around. What a sad thing to think about it. Please take care of yourself, my friends, and we will see you again.